And how am I going to personalize it for that person? Because I have patients that come in that are referred by other patients, which to me is actually the best advertisement. And they'll say, oh, I know what you did for my friend. So, and I went online, I looked all this up, so I know what you're going to tell me. And my number one thing is, well, I may not be telling you the same thing because even if I'm ordering the same tests, you are different. Your circumstances are different. So our plan is going to be different. Because, you know, patients always want to come in prepared too, especially those who um, see us, there are, you know, feet for service. And then the other thing is, you want to keep in the back of your mind, okay, this patient may be presenting with this symptom or these findings, but what else is going on? What is this continuum that they're on that I may be able to reverse, even if that's not necessarily what they came in for? And so for me, the answer has been functional medicine, where we focus on the root and the trunk of the tree and not so much on the branches. It doesn't mean that we don't use our colleagues in those areas. It means that in trying to understand the disease process, we're going to focus on their genetic predisposition, right? what they've bathed their genes in, these fundamental physiologic processes that we all have as human beings, and how these fundamental clinical imbalances develop out of all those interactions so we can see where our patients are and then decide how you're going to treat them, where are you going to start. So these fundamental functional imbalances create our matrix, which if you've taken any courses from the Institute for Functional Medicine, you'll see that it's changed. It's ever-changing. It's not the same because it's constantly evolving. By the way, how many of you have taken courses in functional medicine? Phew, great. So in functional medicine, we talk about our antecedents, triggers, and mediators. Basically, what preceded this? What triggered it? And then we also want to try and figure out where on this matrix is the patient. Because you may be in more than one area, right? Patient can come in with a GI digestion absorption barrier integrity problem who also has a neurohormone transmitter or a detox. And some patients who come to you with lots of chronic diseases may fill the entire matrix. But then you're going to decide where you're going to start because there's all these interactions between those areas. And so sometimes it's not so important where you start. Although I have my own pet peeve, I always start in the gut because um, I feel like that's really important. And when I talk about the gut, I'm talking also about nutrition, you know, how they eat and what sort of, what is their lifestyle like in terms of not just nutrition, but are they getting enough sleep? You know, do they have meaningful relationships? How do they de-stress? Are they exercising? Now, we also have these principles in functional medicine. And I've grouped a few of them together just for the purposes of time. So the first one is a continuum of health and wellness. Well, what exactly does that mean? That means that patients are going to present to you along this spectrum, right? If you have disease on one end and then wellness on the other, patients can start to already have dysfunctions and not necessarily have any symptoms or at least any overt symptoms. And that's when the history becomes really important because you're going to ask them about their family history, right, their exercise history, their diet history, and you're going to try and put them along this continuum. Now, the problem is that many of our patients present already with illness, right? But the more and more educated they become, you're, you're also going to find some patients presenting, you know, where they're starting to have some early symptoms. Of course, we want to catch them along this continuum at the earlier stage, the better, right? Because it's easier to reverse. But I also wanted you to keep that in mind as you're taking a history because you can assess a lot or, or have an idea about some of those underlying imbalances by asking about what processes have happened in their history, in their family history. So for example, if you're worried about someone with a methylation defect or a woman presents to you with a lot of premenstrual syndrome or premenstrual um, symptoms, you're going to want to ask in the history about, well, is there peripheral vascular disease in your family? Right? Is there cardiovascular disease? What about depression and anxiety? Because what are you thinking about? Those are all methylating problems. So you can start get, to get an idea of what's going on with this patient by asking them about their history. And then balance. What are we talking about balance? 
Well, between internal and external forces, right? Really, but everything in life has to be or should be in balance, including our own body. And so we're going to try and figure out where is there this balance in that patient. And we're also talking about balance between mind, body, and spirit. And what about biochemical individuality? Oh, we've been hearing a lot about it, right? Bruce Ames has devoted his whole life to studying it. And I was always taught in medical school that diseases were predominantly genetic, right? And not so much environmental, but now we know it's the opposite. That it's only about 25% genetic, and the other 75% is environmental, especially if you look at the work that Bruce Ames has been doing. And you know, he's 88 and still going strong, still publishing. Because it's those interactions that are gonna make us, us, your patient, present the way that they're presenting. And don't forget that when we talk about biochemical individuality, it may be that your patients have a higher need for a certain nutrient, right? Like, for example, with MTHFR, if they have a single nucleotide polymorphism in that, they're going to, going to need either the activated form of folate, which is what I prefer, but there's others. So that we are trying to personalize and individualize our approach to that patient. And then with, there's many different people that have written about bio biochemical individuality. I also really follow the work of Walter Willett when he talks about how important that is as you're approaching someone with cardiovascular disease or cancer. And then what do we mean about personalized treatment? Well, we're really talking about developing a protocol specific to that patient. And although this cartoon is a little bit extreme, when we talk about traditional medicine, it really does feel like that way. The cookie cutter approach, as I call it because we're really trying to integrate the cutting edge scientific research that we have to diagnose what's going on with your patient, but also in your approach to treatment. And that's why, to me, personalized laboratory testing has been a great, of great help. Now, I'm gonna discuss with you a case a little bit later that I did a lot of different testing on, and I picked a, a patient that was difficult for me, um, because I think it is in learning through those, those challenges, challenging patients that we really grow. And that's what we're all about, right? We're also all on this continuum of learning and becoming better at what we do. So what happens with a normal aging process? Well, it depends. Everybody's a little bit different, right? We have some patients that are on this downward step, right? They're just constantly and quickly becoming unhealthy or, and eventually diseased. And then we have other patients that are in this sort of waxing and waning and they don't have symptoms until a little bit later in life. And then we have other patients that are pretty healthy until all of a sudden they get a major diagnosis like a cancer, right? And so what we want to do in, in age management medicine is we want to try to identify them early, but we also want to try and stop some of that, that process or reverse it. And that's where those, identifying those functional imbalances helps because really it's all about trying to widen the time that they're healthy. It's not that we're going to die. We're all going to die eventually, but we want to expand our years, but also make them good years, right? As I tell my patients, it's all also about the quality. 